Okay, recording button is on, so I think we're good to go. Um, good evening. This is the monthly meeting of the District Advisory Board of North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District. Our main focus tonight on the agenda will be the bylaws of the district dealing basically with the number of participants on the board and where they will geographically represent. So to take us through this evening, I am going to turn the meeting over to Shonda Emery, our facilitator for tonight. Thank you, Chandra. You're muted. Thank you so much, Wilda, and it's good to be with you. I'm Chandra Emery, and I am um, work for the county with Resolution Services. Um, Amy Herman is also on in the meeting, and we're facilitating from Resolution Services. Um, I'm going to offer a structure similar to what we experienced at our last meeting on, I believe it was September 9th, and it has the same objective. So my guideposts for this meeting are... Um, to really encourage and listen for uh, full participation and all of your voices to be engaged um, with a balance towards um, forward movement. Um, I'm also uh, managing the time so that we begin well and end well. And, um, and I um, am seeking clarity about where you're making decisions and where there's still um, room for discussion. Um, so just to summarize where we've been, um, and that this is going back to September 9th, at the, at the conclusion of the last meeting, um, the staff um, agreed they would share a couple of map illustrations to help with this discussion, and I, they have done that by email, um, and a copy of the slides from the presentation from last meeting. We don't have, um, and we might have a couple of map slides this time, but no visual presentation as last time. And so all of that information has been provided. And, um, and then the board members would focus this meeting on proposals uh, for board composition. So same objective as last time, to amend the bylaws to achieve the NCPRD's board of directors stated goal, which is to accurately reflect the proportional representation of the district. Um, I wanna note that the staff of the NCPRD will take the take on the task of drafting the bylaws once the board approves what they will be and um, that they're not anticipating any further discussion um, once there's a draft but they will circulate that um, the, the draft before submitting it to the commissioners for final approval. Um, I want to make sure that there's general consensus about that process. That's something that the NCPRD staff has um, uh, would like to, to how they would like to proceed. Is there any discussion needed about that? Um, yes, I see Grover. And thank you for raising your hand. I also want to mention that you can you can raise hands. That works. And there's also a raise hand feature um, via Zoom. If if anyone wants to use that, I'll watch for those too. Okay. So I see you, Grover. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. Um, I couldn't find the raise hand ver uh, version of the, in the Zoom thing, so I, okay. I did the old fashioned way. Um, no so worries. it's about your comment and I appreciate that, that um, we are going to do the input, but I don't wanna lose all the input that was done that brought us up to this point. There was quite a lot of work done on the bylaws and I don't know how much of that got into the actual draft um, and then there's things that are grossly missing from the where we left it. So I don't know how those are going to get made up. Case in point, there's nothing in the draft set that I saw that talked about how officers are elected and, and what officers and the duties of the officers, etc. And then there's a whole long list of things that had been put into the system before about uh, things that are either missing or need to be addressed as part of the bylaws. So I'm very much focused that this particular meeting is to be focusing on the makeup but you then made the the uh, draw to that and then the staff would take that and there's bunches of stuff that has not been clarified and I would like to see that before they spend a lot of time drafting okay okay thank you Grover uh, all right so I think to Scott um, I think Grover you're clarifying that my intent was to speak to just the the part of the, the 
a term in the bylaws related to the composition of the board. And I didn't mean to expand the scope. Am, am I correct, uh, Scott, or someone else? Well, yes, I would say yes, kind of. Um, Grover does raise a really good point, and I think um, we don't want to spend too much time here and get and get sidetracked from the main task at hand tonight. But um, but that is a very good point that um, needs to be addressed at in in some capacity. So the the board, um, the DAB, when I say board, um, spent a considerable amount of time going through the, the, the bylaw document and you know, to, even to the level of uh, wordsmithing it in the, in the meetings on the, up on the screen and, and that kind of thing. So f the first thing I would say is um, Grover and, and for everybody's understanding, we have all of that information retained. So we have anything that we did previously um, and we can also go back and check the, um, we have the audio recordings and, and all of that of the meetings to make sure that we've captured everything. Um, but it is going to be a bit of a process because I know there's a lot of interest from the DAB about specific things in the, in the bylaws. So I guess um, our thought was, and, and I'll throw this out to the DAB for, for um, your um, feedback, is that rather than have the DAB spend you know, however many more meetings or however many more hours working on that, that the staff would attempt to capture those um, points that you made previously, along with whatever you decide about the composition, which is, I think, is the biggest piece we're trying to figure out. Capture that into the, the document as a draft update and send that around to the group for input. Um, you know, doing things over email is a little tricky. Um, in fact, um, you know, technically public meeting law, we're, we're not supposed to deliberate by email. So we'll have to think about that a little bit. And, you know, perhaps, perhaps we need to have an, another meeting in October where we come back one, one final time and, and, you know, we've drafted the bylaws, we send them out and um, we have, we have sort of a final blessing discussion, if you will, that you, that you would bless those and we would move them to the board. I hesitate with saying that a little bit just because I, again, I, I'm trying to avoid the getting bogged back down issue, which, um, you know, certainly could, could happen again. So I would open that up, you know, I'd defer back to you, the board, um, Chair Parks, if you, you know, as the chair, if you have thoughts and you want to kind of help guide that thought a little bit, but uh, that was the idea is that we would, the professional staff would, would attempt, you know, uh, to put those together in a draft form and get those somehow back out to you. And, um, and then obviously at some point we get your blessing and move it on to the board. We have to do that by October 31st. So could we, if we have another meeting in October, could, I mean, let's, hypothetically, let's say we come to agreement tonight on composition. And I think the only other thing that goes along with that is <clears throat> future selection committee. But even that could wait, you know, because we got to do something else right now. But anyhow, um, if we did a red line draft so that we could see where changes have been made and where, and then we'd also know where something got missed and we still need to have a discussion about it or something. Um, like Grover mentioned officers and I, in, the in the current bylaws, it does say that there would be um, a chair and a vice chair elected and that it's in July, you know. Um, but I think, but it doesn't say, doesn't say much more than that. So we may want to flesh that out in other areas, you know, um, but could you, could you come back to us? I guess what I'm asking is, could you make those changes that you have notes on and do a red line copy so that we'd all look at a red line copy instead of just looking at like what's a final document or whatever? Yes. Would make more we, sense. We can certainly do that. Um, I would suggest that we'll, you know, after, depending on where we go tonight with the discussion, um, we'll have to figure out when we could, uh, we'll, we'll get that turned around as quickly as possible, but it, it, it may take a bit of time. It's gonna be, you know, to go through the entire thing and make sure we've captured everything and, and um, to the best of our ability, put, put all of the 
um, the edits in there that we think represent what you all have worked on uh, could could take us, you know, a couple of a good solid couple of weeks with everything else that we have to do, and then um, you know get that get that turned around. Uh, it, hopefully, not that long, but but that that might take a bit of time just to get get back in there and really pull everything together. And that puts us mid October. Then you know, do we want to potentially think about uh, tentatively uh, uh, planning a one additional DAB meeting in say the third week of a, of October that we would come back together after emailing it and you all have had time to digest it and ask your questions or whatever and spend a bit of time getting you to sign off on those. Is that I'm open to other suggestions. I'm just trying to move us down a path here. Go ahead, Paul. And I, is anyone watching the raise hand feature? I've had my had my oh. hand up for quite a long time. So is, is okay. who's watching that? Um, Amy and I will watch it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. So um, I just want to, in reference to everything that's been discussed, just so yeah, we've basically made a commitment to have this wrapped up by the end of October. Um, if you all remember where we were in February at our last meeting, um, um, which was a, which got disrupted, but um, up until that point, we had a red line version, and we were going section by section, and we not we did not make it from beginning to end. Um, so that that part of it was never done. So it seems to me that it, it would I would hate to see staff spend two weeks. Um, and losing two weeks of time, um, trying to figure out where we were when we haven't got to where we ought to be. So it seemed to be more efficient that we, if we can make some enough adjustments here right now tonight on the map, I don't think there's a lot of work there, get that behind us. And then maybe there's even time tonight to start reviewing some of those sections of the bylaws that we haven't covered. Um, I think historically the challenge has been is that uh, we have not followed the bylaws. And that's created some a little bit, a little bit of havoc. So I, I think we ought to have bylaws that we intend to follow. And if there's something in the bylaws and we're not following it, and there's a reason why, then we ought to rectify that. The other thing I want to just say, and Gary Schmidt's not here, but and none of our PGA staff are that were assigned to this um, at the time, but there was an overall initiative at the county to streamline bylaws so that we don't have wildly different bylaws or different rules. I mean, you can't make them all the same perfectly the same, obviously, but so I wanna make sure we incorporate some of those things in there and maybe that's where PGA comes in. So my my advice is let's, let's get as far, let's get as quickly through the map thing as we can. And then if staff can just put up the red line version from February, the minutes, whether it was the February minutes or the January, whatever it was, but. Um, and then we can just kind of go over those and, and, and discuss what we want to do and change. And that way, we don't lose two weeks of time, staff time. Okay. Any other comment before we, we shift? And I'm going to propose a process matter. Yes, Grover. I yeah, see I you. still can't do uh, hands up on the Zoom, but that's fine. You see me. Okay. I, uh, I concur with what Paul said. And also, we already had a tentative meeting scheduled for two weeks from today. And I don't know there's any reason I never heard it was going away. So two weeks from today, um, with some work in the in between what we didn't get, we could jump right in and do that. Because there are things from the beginning to the end that uh, were discussed. They're in side notes, but they haven't been resolved. And it is important that um, the bylaws reflect what this uh, advisory board is focusing on, given that 80% of this advisory board represents unincorporated, and there's not a word of mention about any of the um, Clackamas County comprehensive plan, whole sac section on guidance and directives and goals and policies, et cetera, and they've never integrated here. And I, 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 I think that's a great, um, disservice to the 80% of the population that lives under that has those as aspirational goals. I'm done, but I, I just want you to hear there's a lot of stuff that has been neglected over a long time. I'm done. Thanks. And I see you, Wilda. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
I think there's two items we need to for sure deal with tonight, obviously the map and where representatives come from. But we had also come up with a conclusion on what we thought the selection committee should look like. And at this point in time, I don't think we're ready to move on to that particular selection committee. So we need, because of, you know, who's seated and what needs to happen and the new areas and whatever. So, so we need to come to agreement on that, hold, hold back on that. And I'm not sure, I don't know about the others, but as for myself, quite frankly, I've been so focused on the board composition itself, which is what we were charged basically with dealing with from the Board of County Commissioners, that in these many past few weeks, I have not reread the bylaws and gone through every section of those. And at our meetings, we had not been able to get through a great number of those smaller ideas, sections, pieces that we were looking at. And so I would, I would hate to have to hurry that through. And I would also not feel prepared to have discussion about some of those things tonight. Um, it would depend on you know, what areas they are. I think the selection committee and the composition of the board are the two major things that, those are the two that for sure need to go back to the Board of County Commissioners sitting as the district board before the end of October and the other pieces, then perhaps we work on moving forward. I mean, that's just off the top of my head thinking. I just wanna be sure that all of us are prepared to have a full bylaws discussion with all those other items that were left on the table. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to capture, um, Go ahead. I see you Grover. I wanna capture, I think the three proposals that I'm hearing and, and then shift gears to talking about um, the comp board composition. So I, I and I, I think these proposals are compatible with each other, but um, one is uh, Commissioner Savas, your proposal that the uh, staff share a red line of the work already done sooner than later, so well before the two week mark. And then, Wilda, I think you're proposing, and can piggyback on that, that um, the, a fuller draft of the bylaws can occur after the October deadline if needed, because you want to make sure that you are responsive to the um, county commissioner's directive on board composition. Uh, uh, can I see just by some nodding, maybe from Scott and others who understand the directive, if, if I'm correct about what I'm hearing? Is that correct? Go ahead, Scott. If I, I could, see, I see you, I see, Grover, shaking no. Let's. I see Grover's hand too. So I'll, I'll just, from a staff perspective, I'll just make a quick comment. I, um, we can. So let's see. I, I, I wanted to say that um, what Wilda just said a, a little bit ago about kind of you know grabbing the the bylaws on the fly when when we haven't shared those out and haven't really looked at them since um, you know February. Um, but but that's up to the group. Um, I can share those. We can send those out to everybody. We'll find the red line. That's the other thing too. Is you you asked if we could just pull. I think Commissioner Savage, you asked that a little bit ago. If we could pull those up for the remainder of the meeting. And um, I've I've asked Jessica quickly to see if she can find those. But I, um, we're a bit challenged because we're kind of coordinating on the fly while the meeting's happening here, and we're, we weren't prepared for that part of it. So. Worst case scenario is we can send those out to you, as, you know, in their rough form that they were in when we last met immediately after this, you know, tomorrow. Um, we'll send them out, you know, ASAP to the group. The other thing I wanted to mention uh, kind of about the process here is that we had um, inquired in a couple of previous emails with all of you whether we could continue essentially having these meetings every Wednesday night um, for, until, until we get done. Staff is prepared to do that. It's up to you, the DAB, what you can do um, as a group. Um, I think there was one of the Thursday, well, no, we've already dealt with that. And that was in October. Anyway, I, I, I just wanna throw it back out to both uh, to our facilitators to help us arrive at a conclusion on the meetings as well as the group, uh, the DAB when do we you know how many more meetings do we want to have when do you want to meet i just want to let you know that staff stands prepared to meet as much as we need to until we get this process done but 
Um, you all are volunteers giving your time, so I don't want to impede on that. So I'm just going to roll that back out to you to say we could we could continue to meet any Wednesday through the end of October as needed, pending the DAV's availability to, to get to these things. Because I'm not sure we'll be able to get a good conversation about the, the bylaws this evening if we tried to get those up on the board and really we, we need to do some prep on that. Yes, okay. All right, so, so I'm gonna summarize and then pivot to the agenda that we have planned. Um, and what I propose is that uh, at about the, when we have about a half hour left or maybe a little more, we'll make time for the public comments and then also circle back to process questions addressing the drafting of the bylaws, the number of meetings you'll have in the month of October and so on. All right. Um, so, and then Grover, did you have something? Yeah, I just want to clarify, after the 31st of October, only Wilda and Joel will be on the board. So we won't be continuing on unless something changes in that regard. So it's an interesting thought, but we only have between now and the end of the month, and then our extended terms expire again. Okay, and so there will still be, uh, uh, right, so the, the, member, the, the board may be a different composition starting in October or in November. Right. Right, maybe different it, it, it won't, there won't be a board convened okay. under the new process. I, I prom, I, I'll, I'll bet you lunch, it won't be until the year is over into next year, just to, okay. just to be clear at okay. the pace and what needs to be done, et cetera. So, all right, go ahead. I'm, gonna, I, yeah. I'm, I'm noting that as another issue, but I do wanna try to um, move to the agenda now. Um, I did see Deborah, did you have something? No, I just wanted to echo the point that um, there wouldn't be a quorum of the board okay. beyond October, so nothing could be done unless um, there's maybe a new directive from the VCC. Okay. All right. And, thank, you. thank you both. And the process, the recruiting process for new board members is, is really lengthy because they have to set up interviews with everybody and then it has to go to the VCC for final approval. And there's always um, some kind of enormous time lag, I think, um, when I've been appointed to boards. So I would take that into consideration. Okay. All right, thank you all. Um, all right, so shift gears a little bit um, and get into the discussion for tonight and come back to this important topic of the bylaws and the drafting and so on. Um, so to bring all of your voices into this meeting, um, I'm going to offer you this prompt and ask if you would share um, uh, something that gives you a feeling of calm and peace. It could be an image, a... Um, of some sort of visual sensation, whatever you want to choose. Um, but if you would just do a go around and share something, you know, I'm going to say libraries, you know, bookstores do it for me. Is there something, and who would like to start and just, you know, do it popcorn style? Grover, and then I see Deborah. Yeah, why don't you just call on people, Chandra, because otherwise we all start talking over each other. Okay, um, I'll make mine, mine easy. Be ready? I do this prefer to I'm... use the hand calling. I do, I, or the hand raising, rather than calling on people. But okay, go ahead, Grover. That was it. I just did it. Oh, I'm sorry. I I, I talked over you. Can you repeat yourself? This. Oh. This out here. Yes. This, this. This is what gives me peace and calm. That's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> well, no one's going to outdo that. I don't think. Okay. Oh, I think I can. Deborah. Um, a daily walk in the nature park in Gladstone. Mm. Thank you. Wilda. Connecting with my 13 great grandchildren and my 11 grandchildren and my four children and, and, um, socializing my beautiful 16 pound cat. <laughs> Thank you.
Joel. Uh, my daughter is laughing. Oh, yeah. Ben. Oh, you're on mute. How about now? Good. Strolling through an alpine meadow. Mm. Yeah. Without fire. <laughs> Smoke. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, who else would like to share? I'm I'm happy to. Uh, yeah, I just say that uh, one of the tranquil things for me that is uh, being at the coast is just overlooking the coastline. Thank you. All right. Anyone from staff like to share? I think that was all the board members. If I'm correct. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. And so, let me see here. Um, uh, the last bit of information I want to share uh, from September 9th is the areas of consensus and it's from here that you will move on into your discussion um, for tonight. Um, first is that there's consensus that there will be an 11 member board um, with representatives from the five sub areas. That's the city of Milwaukee and the four unincorporated areas. Uh, that there will be two representatives per sub area and then one at large position representing the community centers. This was in the email um, that I think Melina wrote. Um, that, there will, that the representation will be based on population. Number three, that the composition of the board will be adjusted from time to time to maintain a representation based on the population distribution. So adjusting for changes in that. And four, that there are a variety of means for determining the current or operating population distribution with pros and cons to each. Some of the ones you mentioned were that staff can do the analysis. There's a, a census that you could rely on that's every 10 years and there's some PSU studies that you could rely on. Um, and at the at conclusion of the last meeting, just to repeat, um, you said that at this meeting, you would be focusing on making proposals. Um, I think before you, or as a part of that process, um, you're going to consider some information from staff, the, the two map um, illustrations that uh, Melina and I think Dylan prepared. Um, I think this is a good time maybe to shift to that discussion. Does that make sense to Scott and Melina? Yeah, yeah and I'll, um, thank you, Chandra, and I'll, I'll kick that off. So as, as you just said, uh, as Chandra just said, um, we took uh, your request from the last meeting and uh, based on that direction that, that Chandra just summarized, um, we uh, worked with our GIS department and um, created a couple of um, draft maps for your consideration. And um, I'm going to ask Molina to walk to walk you through that. Um, uh, just as a, an, either an introduction or a reintroduction, uh, Molina DeFrancesco is our marketing and communications specialist and also um, is, is, um, has uh, expertise in demographics and she kind of got drew the lucky straw to get to work on um, helping to coordinate this mapping uh, exercise for us here over the last few weeks. Um, and so um, Melina has, um, has the two maps, is gonna share those and, and it's the same ones that we sent out to you but we just thought we would walk through them to give you kind of how we develop those and then, of course, um, allow you to provide your input on that. So uh, with that, I'm just going to give it to Melina here. Thanks, Scott. So um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, before I do, just a little background. So um, as Scott mentioned, uh, these proposed map options were created uh, by the county's GIS department, which is Geographic Information Systems. Um, and they, they pulled that information using ESRI and the American Community Survey, which is um, census data, as we know. Um, and so that's where the information comes from. And it, it's really as accurate as we can get at this time, you know, with where we are um, with, with the current census. So um, first, just really quick, so I'm gonna share my screen. Let me know if you can't see it, but 
go. All right, everyone, can you see that? Okay, great. Um, so just really quick, um, just wanted to touch upon our, our existing or you know, our former DAV boundaries, the ones that we were tasked to update. Um, and, and the reason I wanna share this is because um, these different sub areas, this is kind of what we used as our base um, and, then, and then built from there. And the different criteria that we used to update these different sub areas um, were, um, and this is in order of priorities, so uh, proportional population representation. Uh, that was key, first and foremost. Um, after that, you know, we were using major roads and other markers um, to expand each of the different regions as needed to balance out the populations. Um, and then if that wasn't possible, then we used census uh, block boundaries um, as well. So that was kind of the criteria for how the different boundaries got um, adjusted. And so we're just going to dive into the maps. And again, after this, um, we're going to open it up for questions, but we wanted to just walk you through um, the two different versions and, and provide a little more information. So this is um, option one. And as you can see, uh, it's very similar um, to our existing uh, boundaries. And and so the, the city of Milwaukee, the boundaries stay the same there. Um, the real difference is, you know, east of 205 um, was a, a fairly large area. Um, and so in order to balance out the population, um, area four and two there, the yellow and the purple, as you can see, they had to expand and grow um, east of 205. And so um, by doing that, as you can see, um, all the different sub areas um, will form unincorporated are around 20,000. Um, so we did manage to find a way to balance out the, um, the distribution um, of population in all the different areas, but it did require a little finesse and a little balancing of those areas. And then you can also see in the Oak Lodge area, um, we needed to increase population there as well. And so um, what we did there was uh, move the boundary to the right over to um, Oakfield Road, and so just to increase the population there. So again, this one um, mirrors our, our, our current um, sub areas very closely, just with some tweaks to achieve the, the balance in population, um, which again is 20,000, so uh, about in each area. So that's option one. Um, I'm going to dive directly into option two. So option two, it's essentially, again, very similar um, to option one. You'll see that the boundary for the city of Milwaukee is the same. Um, very little changes to areas three and four, the yellow and the pink. The real key difference here is that the Oak Lodge area and the Oakfield areas, instead of being split vertically, so east and west, they are now split horizontally, so north and south, just a different way of um, just providing different representation. But as you can see, again, um, we uh, kept it to um, around 20,000 in each of the different sub areas. One other consideration um, for this version of the map, and I'm, I'm unable to show you my cursor, but um, on the left um, in the south, the, the boundary there, it's um, on Naif Road. And so um, the, the key reason for doing that was to keep um, the two CPOs, um, so the, the Oak Grove CPO and the Jennings Lodge CPO as intact as possible. Um, and then it grew up from there. And so um, in order to keep the population at 20,000, we kind of had to, to um, have the, the boundary crawl up along 205 there, as you can see. Um, so these are the two different areas. Um, I'll go back to the first really quick, option one. Option two, um, very similar, some, some slight differences. And so now we are going to, I'm gonna pass it back to Chandra and we are going to open it up for um, questions. And I'm gonna leave the maps up, but Chandra, for any reason you need me to take them down to be able to raise hands, just let me know. Chandra, you're muted. Thank you, Grover. Um, what I'd like to do is have you share your questions um, and then follow up with some answers just so we can get an idea of what, what you all are thinking about as you see these illustrations. So who has comments or questions? 
Well, in a vacuum, I'll always speak. Okay, Grover, yes. Yeah, I have a, first of all, I'm thrilled with the work that was done and thank you for doing that. The only concern I have is, is that um, I don't work for the county or any other large organization, so I have to print in grayscale. So my request is that um, you can't tell the difference between area one and two in either configurations by, by a grayscale. So if you could put for future things, look at what it looks like in grayscale, given that most of us out here have to deal with that. So hash marks or all kinds of different things or more contrasting colors like the yellow and the green do contrast, but the two, the blue and the whatever that orange color doesn't. So that, that's all I want to say about that. And I did want to say, I very much appreciate the work that went into it. And I have opinions about it, but I'd like to hear from other people. Great, yeah. Okay, I'll others. Go ahead and jump in. Uh, uh, Commissioner Savas here. Um, uh, thank you. I think the work's uh, excellent. Um, and I think this kind of fulfilled my, my suggestion request at the last meeting that maybe we were find a way to um, identify the south part of the district more succinctly because it appears to be the most severely underserved area of the district. Um, and we accomplished by this map that we're looking at also accomplished keeping the CPOs intact. And I think um, that will help us considerably because um, having the really the two strong active, consistently active CPOs in the same area um, doesn't necessarily um, uh, bode well for the remainder of the district and maybe for each other if they have different opinions. And <clears throat> so I, I, I really like this particular map. Um, I, I, I think it's, it's very reflective of the CPOs to some degree, but it gives us an opportunity to look at the other areas and see if we can't uh, further discussions about trying to activate area four and area three to get them um, alive. Not that we're putting a lot of a lot of value on CPOs, but if we can make that happen. The other thing I will say, um, uh, Melina, uh, um, so the original map, the very first one you showed, and you said existing, uh, that's really not, I mean, we, we haven't seen that map until I posted it, I believe, at the, at the DAB meeting. It's been, it's been collecting dust for 20 years, I think. So I'm not sure it's actually existing, but it was, a, it was the, the last map when there were sub areas. But sub areas are not mentioned in the bylaws, so therefore currently in the bylaws, I don't think there's any reference. Uh, Scott, do you know of any, any reference to sub areas in the bylaws currently? I don't think so. No, we were just, I think maybe the, the terminology was a little bit um, confusing. But basically what we meant was the, um, the, the prior existing uh, DAB sub areas, just, just as a point of reference. So no, I don't, I don't believe they're referenced. In like the that, Malia, yeah, Malia, you did a great job. Thank you so much. Joel, yeah. Hi, I, uh, I don't know if you can switch it back to the, uh, I think it was a second map or listed as number two, but uh, Paul, Paul kind of answered this question. Um, I know, again, not debating how much stock we're putting into actual CPOs here, but uh, it sounded like this option two here kind of reflected uh, the, the current CPOs uh, individually. And I'm just thinking, you know, forward thinking, uh, hopefully these other CPOs will, will gain some activity uh, and kind of in line with the accountability uh, portion of, of representation, um, do the areas, I guess, three and four also kind of lend to the current CPO boundaries uh, if and when they ever, uh, you know, get, get to a more active status. Uh, because I think that's just one vehicle of accountability as far as being able to report back and, uh, you know, express concerns that uh, we should take advantage of if we can. Okay, and I see Wilda. Yeah, thanks. I was just going to say I, I also certainly appreciate all the work staff put in on this. It um, it's something that I think um, looks really fair and amenable to everyone. And I guess you know we're probably getting almost to the point where we're saying, well, we would do it horizontal or vertical. I mean, you know, if the map part looks okay. But to me, I think it makes sense to look at option two where that does keep the CPO areas, you know, um, more within what they had originally been set for. So that, uh, 
that certainly seems to make sense to me. Okay. Uh, I don't see any other hands at the moment. Um, what I want to ask is, are there any questions directly for Melina? Or Amy, yeah. do you have something? No, Deborah had her hand up. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, um, just to be, uh, make this a very unusual meeting, I, I pretty much agree with everybody. And, um, and I think especially, I mean, uh, Chair Bernard said he wanted us to organize in a way that there would be accountability. And I think option two does that the best. And also I think it makes sense um, if you, because 205 is the boundary for both um, area two and, and area one. And um, I, I just think that makes more sense than having area two spill out all over and beyond 205. So I'm basically agreeing with everybody. Uh, I see Grover. I just wanna also continue with we're all agreeing. Um, I have had conversations in the past with people who are forming the um, Sunnyside uh, CPO, and I do believe some of them have applied for the uh, next iteration of the DAB. So that 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 it nicely includes area three doesn't cut them up. I think is great, and having that area that is the east part of this area one, it just gives an opportunity for more outreach into those areas where they haven't had representation along the lines that. Um, was uh, uh, advocated for and, and I'm totally supporting having the DAB members are accountable for partnering with uh, NCPRD and PGA to on a regular basis outreach to update and and get data back whether it's quarterly or semi-annually or whatnot but it's still an improvement over what we're getting now of those unrepresented areas so I think this uh, definitely works in that regard. And um, again, kudos. I just have my request about us black and gray people. Yes, I see you, Ben. So if I? Yes. Okay, let me unmute here. Oh, um, I just want to clarify, like, I don't know if I'm colorblind, but it looks to me like the area one is like the salmon color. And it does, that salmon color does jump over 205, uh, correct? Because Deborah said that she favors this because 205 was a logical cutoff line, but I don't see the division line between one and three kind of up on the north, unless you're just looking at the color difference. Yeah, I can answer that. So, um, so it's it's area two that that doesn't expand into um, east of two hundred five any longer, but area one does. Area one does. Okay. It does. Yeah, and and we really should it, when we send this out again, we can flip some of the colors so that's more <clears throat> contrasting. Um, yeah, and just just in order to maintain that twenty thousand um, in population, you know we. There's only so many ways to expand yeah, <laughs> one sure. direction or another. Um, and again, with, with area three um, having quite a bit of population, you know, that's really the only area that we can expand into well, to balance things out. Excuse me. Yes, where, where beyond, I mean, because to me, I, I'm not sort of like Ben, I can't really tell too much difference in the color. Um, so I assumed it, it um, the 205 was a border, but where, where then is area one moving beyond 205? I'm going to escape out of this view so that I can use my cursor and that, so that you can see it. Um, so let me just expand here. All right, so if you look here, um, the difference between the pink and the salmon. So. In just a moment, Deborah, are you seeing the cursor, Ben? Is everyone seeing the cursor? 
I can see the cursor. Okay. I can't tell a color difference. I really can't. Yeah, so so area one, if you can just follow my cursor here, mm -hmm. it, it just kind of follows along the green line here and then jumps right here. So it's a little fragmented again, which is, you know, one of one of the things that had to happen in order to increase the number back up to 20,000. So area three, the pink, um, cuts off at this green boundary, cuts off right here, um, and then, you know, right, right around um, this area. So does that make sense, can, if you can see my cursor? So this right here is still area one. So it's really, it's just, it's, it's the area immediately um, east of, of 205 here. Um, so it's not a clean, it's not a clean line. Um, it is a little fragmented, but again, um, we can either expand north <laughs> um, or we can expand east. And so, you know, it's, it's a, it's a delicate balance um, in order to keep these population numbers, you know, uh, proportionate. Does that, can you see it? Does that answer your question? And that's, that's representative of how the CPO works? It crosses over 205? No, when, when mentioning the CPOs, uh, that was specifically mentioning this area here because the Jennings Lodge CPO is, is in this area right okay. here. Yeah. <laughs> just to jump in real quick, that was, I guess, one of my, when I was speaking earlier, I was kind of just curious how the other CPOs kind of translate to these areas, three and four. Uh, I'm just not familiar enough with them. Uh, are they close to where those could be somewhat representative or not? Uh, that uh, kind of piggybacking on what Ben just said. But. Yeah, our, and Scott, feel free to jump in here. Um, I know our CPO specialist, Katie, isn't on the call tonight, but I, I do know that um, Southgate in Area 4, um, I have heard that they are potentially forming um, a new CPO, but that would capture um, that CPO up here. Um, area three, I believe it would mostly be intact. Again, um, I, I'm not entirely sure actually if there's a, a functioning CPO here. Scott, do you know in the Oakfield area? I think, um, yeah, you've, you've captured it essentially. There, um, there's a bit of fragmentation. Um, that is a really, a really fair question. So area four at the top right is, is what had um, existed before as the Southgate CPO. And I I don't know how active they are, but that is a CPO. Area two, the western part of area two is, is the Oak Grove Community Council, which is all intact. But then that bleeds east into um, what was the Oatfield, oh gosh, is it the Oatfield CPO? And uh, Ellen, do you have any, I don't recall that exact terminology on that or anybody else. Clackamas. Let's do a pull up the map. And yeah, um, and then as Malia said, area one is, on the left hand side of area one is is Jennings Lodge CPO, but then of course that does go east into. So I would say this, the eastern portion to the right of areas two and one are kind of a combo of um, what was one CPO or is one CPO. I, I Again, Ellen might be looking at it, but I, I thought it was the Oatfield CPO or something to that effect. I'm not clear on the Robert's order. trying to clarify, so. Okay, thank you, Scott. I, I know I'm there not, are people that know that better than I do. Thank you. I'd be happy to clarify it. Uh, and just a moment, I just see Wilda and Paul with their hands up. So if you guys could go. Yeah, but just, I, oh, I oh. just want to be. I'm I, sorry. I'm I was just going to say. I'm sorry, I apologize, Wilda. I was just. I wanted to just not leave it hanging that we recognize that we had to do some of that type of stuff with the CPOs. And as Molina said, just for everybody's understanding. If you move one line, you squish it. It's like that whole, you know, the balloon thing. If you squeeze the air, it goes somewhere or another. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. It was It's not a perfect solution, but that's that's what we're dealing with here. So sorry. Uh, if I, I can, can remember correct, I'm sorry. It's somebody else speaking. Um, it's, it's you. I'm, Go ahead, Wilda. If I remember correctly, we are not necessarily using CPO geographical areas. That was using these five sub areas is what we spent some time on last time. And, and so what staff has done, and I think they've done a really good job is they've 
the CPOs that are really active and concerned and organized have been left pretty much intact with some other area added to them, which may benefit them, buoy them up in, in some ways. And that's really, that's really great. And the CPO areas that were not as functional, you know, are still somewhat being referred to. So if they should become functional again, it gives them opportunity. But it was my understanding we were using five sub areas and trying to divide it as equally as possible to get a representation of roughly 20,000 per area. And I think they've done that admirably. And I, I'm sorry, but I just would hope we wouldn't get hung up on CPO areas again tonight. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Yes, Commissioner. I, I, I concur with what Weld has uh, said. Um, <clears throat> no matter what, um, just getting back to the 205 boundary, no matter which of the two maps we use in order to get the math to get mathematically equal areas, we're, we, we cross 205 no matter how we do it. So, um, but um, as Wilda stated and, um, and staff that the, uh, the option two map, if you go back to that, um, I think it really kind of preserves and captures the Southgate CPO slash Sunnyside to some degree. Um, and <clears throat> the uh, area where the Oak Grove CPO remains you know, whole, for the most part with some added area, Jennings Lodge CPO uh, remains whole with some added area. And maybe this is maybe this becomes a map for the new CPO. Should we get one lit off? The history of the Oldfield CPO, um, at least for at least 25 years, has been dead. I mean, I mean, it's probably the most it's probably the most um, uh, prehistoric, if you will, of all. And we've tried to have some machinations of area three joining the Clackamas CPO joining with the with another CPO and, and it just never did work out. But so there's been a little bit of life off and on over the last 20 years. So I, we, we could possibly use this as a map to, to, uh, to regenerate that CPO discussion. But I agree with Wilda, uh, while we were not gonna focus on CPO so much as trying to get the, pop, the, sub areas, the, the population of the sub areas as equivalent as possible. I think staff's done a great job and we captured a couple extras again and in, in keeping the some of the CPOs whole and then some. Okay, is, um, it, I'd like to uh, not stop sharing the screen if, unless there's any objection. No, good, okay. Um, Melina, would you, okay, oh great, thank you. Okay, um, and if you need it again, please say so, we can share it again. Um, um, so, uh, Commissioner and Wilda both were making comments about the, the comments about the CPO. So those who brought up the CPOs, just as your questions, do you have any reflections on what you've heard from Wilda and Commissioner Savas? Go ahead, Joel. Uh, my intention, and that's perfect clarification, my intention was yeah. not to rehash the CPO conversation, but as a built-in mechanism of kind of accountability and uh, we're trying to be forward thinking, so uh, whether that's modified at some point or not, uh, the boundaries of CPOs, it's an opportunity. And uh, if, if option two is maintaining those two particular CPOs because they're currently active, terrific. Uh, I just didn't know if we were kind of decimating the other ones with the boundaries as they were drawn. So I, I okay. will shut up, but my, uh, my intention was not no. to, uh, you know, to take uh, one, two steps backwards there. I apologize. Yeah. No, no apology needed. I think you're just check, you're checking each other out and, and sort of figuring out where you're coming from, that's all. Um, and then Deborah and Ben both had spoken to the CPO. So what do you want to share, if anything? Go ahead, Deborah. I'm, I'm fine. I would, I would like to see another version of area two where the boundaries from area one and area three are clearer because I, I really had a tough time figuring out uh, where things are. And it doesn't affect my um, feeling that area two is, I mean, the option two is probably the best option. I just, for my own um, benefit, I'd like to be clear about where where those boundaries are. Okay, and, and so I know what we're talking about. Yes, and Melina's nodding. I think you're probably on it. Okay, and then Ben, what, what was 
Yeah, so when I first looked at the maps, I'm not familiar with CPO boundaries, so I wasn't really looking at it like that, but the option one to me just looked kind of more holistic, like the zones. Yeah, one jumped over 205, but the zones seemed concentrated. Uh, area, the option two, the zone started getting really long and fragmented. So it's like you could have two people from the same district in totally different spectrums of the universe, different culture, different neighborhood. And if we're going to be discussing parks and all that stuff, I mean, that's what it all comes down to is uh, equity where neighborhood pockets and, and the way I can visualize how those long linear stretches get are gonna be quite different, but you all in the South know those neighborhoods way more than me up here. So I'm kind of feel like if you all are happy, then I am totally excited that you all are happy because I feel like the the distribution is great and hearing from you guys that you like that, then I'm on board. I just wanted to express my opinion that it the map just looked cleaner on option one from a designer's perspective. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and just for the good of the, the connections you all are making, who is willing to share what Ben is raising? He's not, he's not, you know, he's supporting, but what's, what's he raising as an interest um, in the work you're doing? Well, I think Ben's point's well taken. It, it looks cleaner. I mean, the option one looks cleaner from a visual standpoint, um, but for all the reasons we stated from a functionality standpoint, the other option two is, is, is far better. Yes, and I and I also hear you, Ben, raising that uh, the the disparateness of a a person in one area over here having no connection, but being in the same unincorporated area, and acknowledging that it's imperfect, but also saying deferring to the group, right? Okay, all right. Um, I think you're at a point of um, building consensus on the approach you're going to take. Would someone like to make a proposal? Would you like me to tee that up? On, on what option, it, it can be a straw poll too. If you don't have consensus, you can keep talking, but. Um. I, I, I just say just uh, maybe just take a poll on option two and, and we're done. Okay. So level of support for option two. Or thumbs sideways or thumbs down. Uh, what do you do? I'm like, hey, maybe, it. yeah, I'm go for it. Okay. I think, okay. I but think no. I'm seeing everyone is voting in favor, I think. Okay. All right. So you're going to support option two. <laughs> Good. Good. Okay. I think that's your uh, seventh vote. In, in support of a position since we started working together. So it's good. <laughs> um, all right. And maybe uh, Scott or Wilda, will you weigh in on where you think you need to go from here? Um, what are the other outstanding issues on the yes. narrow point? Right. Thank you. I fully believe that appointments to the board and how that happens is important, especially given our time frames, especially given the fact that if we go past the newly established time frame of October 31st, Grover's correct. There's only just Joel and I that are left here. We have applications in and I think application time is closed. And I'd like to hear from Scott on what he thinks could happen as far as appointing the newer, you know, whoever they are, whoever they end up being, the, the new people to those positions and realizing that this has first got to go to the Board of County Commissioners to even be solidified. So we've got a time frame there that is not in our hands necessarily. So I'd like really like to hear what staff thinks about how to do that. And then doing that particular selection <clears throat> in the way that it's always been done with PGA people and, um, and um, staff people and if they feel like it would be important to have somebody from the board quite frankly I would say and he doesn't he's probably not going to agree with me I would think that Joel would be the person to do that since he represents the entire district and he's the only I mean you know, the, it actually represents the entire district not a 
smaller geographic area. Um, you know, so anyhow, I'd like to hear what staff thinks about where we need to go next and if that enters into it. Okay, so if Commissioner and Grover, if yours, uh, if your comments are related to Wilda's, otherwise we'll have staff weigh in. So, okay, I'm seeing yes from Grover. Commissioner? I'll, I'll let, let Grover go first. Okay. Yes, um, the presumption that uh, who represents where, um, I don't think that's been discussed, these areas. Uh, I appreciated Ben's comment about concern about neighborhoods and so on and so forth. But I don't remember crossing any bridge that said that uh, the members of the district advisory board would not represent the entire district. And I also am concerned that we still haven't done away with the zones. So, but it's one district for the entire NCPRD, not five districts, none of that. It's everyone represents the entire thing. So I don't really understand how Joel represents all the people more than any other, and I don't know where we're jumping to that conclusion. So I, I have a significant concern about that. And then the other part is- if, if I may just say, each of us right now was appointed because we represented a specific district. That's how we got, except for me. Yeah, because you represented the no, we were the only side right of we were the file. only remaining. Yes, right. We're the, the only ones remaining. remaining. Correct. Yeah, right. Correct. But we're still and, from and the. I, I don't necessarily. Obviously, any of us on the board represent the entire district, and that should be at utmost when we're sitting on this table. But my point was that Joel wasn't originally appointed from any smaller geographic area. He was appointed from the. Milwaukee Center, which represents the entire district just in its being. So if, you know, forgive me if I gave the impression that the rest of us don't represent the entire district or that Joel, you know, does something different than us, but well, that's I wanna, all I meant by that. Yeah, well, I wanted to clarify what I had to say about that because case in point on most of the advisory boards that I participate on, what has fallen out completely is who we represent. We actually represent the entire base of taxpayers for NCPRD. And to have people who represent that taxpayer body is the important part for me, not where they come from. Now, then we look at what's happened over the last 30 years and there's been a significant lack in certain areas and a dearth in other, or whatever it is, a bonus in the other. But the point is, we need to look at the whole thing and make sure nothing gets left out. That's the importance of having the breadth. And um, I, if we go back to several of us are at large, I don't remember who's from where, but we're not like, oh, well, you just represent this area. So I, 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 I think it's critically important that the, the people being selected and how it's being selected is not a staff function. They can certainly orchestrate it, but it needs to have input from the broader people who actually uh, are being represented. I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I, I think, Wilda, you are acknowledging and agreeing with the larger point that Grover's making. I see you nodding. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. even though I I may come from Milwaukee and that's my appointment base, Yes. I still represent the entire district. Yes. You know, um, Grover was appointed for a position west of or at large, whichever one, I'm not sure which. Yeah. And he still represents the entire district, as does Deborah yeah. and Ben and Joel and yes. the commissioner was appointed from the east side of yes. Highway 205, but he still represents the entire district. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. And Commissioner Savas. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I want to just take a different, uh, maybe a approach or on how we just take the next step. So I, I would like <clears throat> to get the DAB populated as, as soon as possible. And um, I am just really thinking that if we have agreement on the map um, and we have agreement on um, the uh, representation, um, the, the 11, that actually we could start to go to work right now with trying to populate and interview and do everything it takes to get this to be the folks rounded. Um, I think that what we could do, um, and I guess I would look for a head nod from Milwaukee or Wilda on, on this, is that um, if we've got agreement on those two principles, I think we have the bare bones uh, of what it takes to, to, again, start that recruitment process. We already have the recruitment, but the interviews. Um, so 
if, if we agree on all of that, then why couldn't we, um, you know, I could take this back, those two items or three items, uh, that being the appointment process as we kind of outline and draft in the bylaws and say, tell my board on Tuesday, Board of County Commissioners, here's what we got. Um, we got agreement and consensus. Uh, we'd like to go forward um, and uh, start populating and doing the interviews. And, and then we got the rest of October to finalize um, the other aspects of the bylaws. Um, and then that gives us a, a good 30, 40, 30 or 40 day head start at least um, on, on this process and let us continue to do, do the work we need to do uh, in between now and the 31st. Okay, so commissioner has a proposal that um, you, you all are gonna uh, vote on and Wilda, you had a question for Scott. Does that need to be answered before this vote? Well, what Commissioner Savas mentioned and the things we've been talking about are exactly why I wanted to hear from staff about how soon they think they can get the interviews done. They have all the applications in. Now they know the areas that they need to specifically, you know, look for people. And maybe it goes over a block or two, you know, one way. I don't know. But um, I'd like to hear from staff on what their next steps are. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> first of all, I, actually, first of all, um, I want to say congratulations and thank you to you all for reaching consensus on what really I think are the big are the bigger um, issues in this process. This this is. Um, this is monumental and we're, we're moving forward. I, th I think we've gone over the top of the mountain and we're, we're rolling quickly down the other side of it. So it, this is great. Um, we, can, we can figure the rest of this out. There are some logistics um, that you know, some of you have just spoken to and that you know, we'll need to decide on that process. So a few things, a few thoughts on that question that you've prompted, uh, Wilda, which is, um, um, first of all, I wanna let you know that we had, 22 applicants, 22 for the openings, including those of you that are on the commission or the committee right now that, that reapplied. So, um, and they appear to be from all over the district, which is also a big accomplishment. And in, in years past, they've, they've been focused, the applicants would be focused from, you know, some particular areas and, um, and we seem to have done a, a really good job of outreach with our um, PGA partners helping us out with that. So we've got great uh, a great uh, you know amount of applicants to look at, and then it's trying to figure out how we, um, as you've said, how we populate the DAB. Um, the the current process until we until we receive some direction, otherwise, I guess that would be you know the 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 BCC as the the board direction on this to change our appointment process per what the the B, uh, DAB previously recommended with the, the committee from the group, but the challenge there is those of you that are applying would would be, you know, in the discussion about appointing yourselves, apparently, you know, basically, and that 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 complicates it. So I I'm not sure how we work through that exactly. I'm open to to ideas there, but you know, the the we could we could move forward and do um, what we've done in the past, which is staff. Uh, working with those, um, working through that process, and, and our our view is, we want to um, we want to have the the best representative DAB that we can have, and and we would be focused on that, and you know with folks that are interested. But you may have other other suggestions or ideas. Um, uh, the other point I want to make that we do need to keep in mind, and, and Wilda, feel free to speak to this uh, if you if you wish, but we do have an IGA currently with the city of Milwaukee, um, and IGA is an intergovernmental agreement. It is is an overarching agreement between the district and the city that that talks about how we work together as the city being part of the district. That IGA specifies the, the existing nine member DAB and how that's composed. So what we need to think about is that if we were to, if we were to fill a DAB with the 11 member um, composition that you've essentially just, just agreed on, we'd be doing that as sort of, it would be in, um, 
it, it wouldn't align with our current IGA with Milwaukee. And I suppose the, that Milwaukee could, um, you know, maybe the council could, could somehow bless a um, moving forward of this until, you know, give us time to update that IGA um, so that we can proceed with it with a, a functional DAB or, or something to that effect. I can't speak for the city of Milwaukee, but um, so that's a, that's an important thing though, that we do need to think about in terms of, of just a process issue and how we would proceed. But so, I, I, you know, C Commissioner Savas, you just mentioned going back to your, um, to your colleagues on the, on the board and, and giving them an update and sort of getting a, preliminary blessing on this direction and with the understanding that we can we can spend some time fine-tuning the, the the bylaws and getting into the you know as you've talked about earlier the redlining and the really getting into the, the you know kind of the fine the fine details of of the language which we'll get through that that might take us a little bit of work to do but we'll get through that but I think what we need to do is capture the momentum of we've got an agreement on a composition we would love to, you know, figure out a way to maybe um, do some kind of where we fill with that composition, and then we find we fine tune the language of the DA, uh, DAB bylaws, and we get that blessed by the board uh, in the not too distant future. So, the the part that I'm not sure about, and I I, I would love to hear from you all is um, is how we fill those positions because right now our process is it's it's a staff um, it's a staff process where we make a recommendation to the board and the board has the final say. So the, the good news there is though, we could bring those, we could go through that process and with the understanding of what's taken place here and Commissioner Savas as the representative to the board would have great perspective on what's transpired and know, you know, what, what needs to happen. But I'll, I'll leave some of that discussion and guidance to, to you all as to what you're thinking. Okay, now I, I do see Grover and Commissioner Savas. I want to ask Wilda if, if there are any follow-up questions to what Scott shared. Yeah, thank you. Um, one thing that does occur to me is that in appointing new members, we also have to have them in staggered terms, and we haven't discussed that. So we need to we need to consider that. And then also as far as coming to the Milwaukee City Council with um, something that says, hey, we've been working on this for a couple of years. Here's where we know we're headed. It's going to the Board of Commissioners. Um, would they kind of bless it? I think that Kelly Brooks and I could arrange for that to happen um, sooner rather than later, um, at least by the third Tuesday in October. If not, I mean, I don't think we could do it next week, but our reg next regular meeting after that would be the third Tuesday in October. Okay. All right. And then to Commissioner Savas and Grover. Yeah, I'm, I guess I'm going to kind of repeat what I said earlier, just for clarification, because maybe maybe everyone didn't understand what I was saying. So I'll, what I was saying is, I think we, with the, with the number of members, 11, that we decided agreed upon and with the uh, map that we agreed upon and the third being the appointment process as we've crafted earlier in the, in the process. Um, if we got relatively approval for that from the BCC and then a head dot or some kind of agreement to move forward from Milwaukee, you know, with Milwaukee's acceptance that uh, we could get the process started it's not that I don't want to make it perfectly clear. I'm not suggesting that we populate the DAB before October 31st or before the city of Milwaukee and the board of county commissioners officially approve it. We would just have the recruitment process, you know, jump started so that we're, it's underway. Um, so I, there's no, there would be no, um, in my mind, there would be no intent um, to populate and proceed with the DAB um, until the time that the Board of County Commissioners in the city of Milwaukee have signed the agreement, signed the, the, or whatever they, we need to do, whatever the approval process is. I just don't want to, to Grover's earlier point in the meeting, I don't want to see this drag on longer than it needs to drag on. Um, and, and we can, again, expedite getting the DAB populated as soon as possible. That's, that's my only thing. And, and as okay. far as the idea, Scott did raise a good point. You don't want to be sitting on a, on a, interview committee where you're appointing yourself. 
Um, I, I think it's appropriate that if we use that model um, where DAB, existing DAB members, let's just say ourselves, um, are sitting there doing the interview, that when it came up for Grover's interview, if he's an applicant, I believe he is an applicant, that he just steps out of the room and he's not part of that and then rotate around and so that the, the, they're, they are, you know, have, have impartial, they're impartial and there's no, there, there's no influencing um, appointing yourself, so to speak. So okay. I, I think that's the way just, just to get the process started. Doesn't need to bog down our DAB meetings. It shouldn't have any role in that. <clears throat> but as I recall, um, just the coordination that um, there was some language in there and maybe someone could help me with this. I don't have it in front of me, Scott, um, that maybe members of the CPO would be part of the interview panel. There, there was, and that's one thing I think ultimately needs to change moving forward. And I think also what we were talking about is, I believe, and somebody may have this up, I don't have it in front of me, was a couple of people from the government affairs of the county, a couple of people from staff, and two people from the DAB would sit on the selection committee. Or, and then somehow, and then we added CPOs. So I can't remember how we made those changes, but it was, um, was this maybe it was the staff and CPOs and two people from the DAB, but that's I think what we ended up with. All right, so let's go to Grover, and then I would like to check several items for consensus, and um, and then we'll go from there. So Grover, yes. Well, thanks. Uh, waiting patiently. Most of what I wanted to say got said. Uh, I want to underline the part about staggering, yes, and I also want to underline the part about that um, no one would be in the particular part of interviewing for their own area. We have five distinct areas. Milwaukee does their own in their own way, and Milwaukee Center does its in own way. The other four um, would be you have to be living in that area to do it, so if it's your area, then you couldn't be on the selection committee for that. Uh, and then the last thing is, in the notes we had from the, and I always hate using the term red line, because for me, with all the racial stuff going on, that is such a charged word, but I understood the innocence with which it's used because it is in fact red on this very thing, the change. But nonetheless, nomination subcommittee will include two Clackamas County staff, two members of the DAC or DAB, and representatives, uh, two representatives from community planning organizations within the district. And since there are um, at least three that I understand uh, that have life in them, that's at least a source to spread them out of the uh, Milwaukee pocket and get more from a broader area as far as the influence. And then you have people on this board who also fit that, so that's it. Thank you, okay. So I, I'm gonna check for consensus on several items. Before I do that, are there others who have not spoken uh, in the last 10 minutes that wanna weigh in? There's some of some who have been quieter than others. Deborah, yes. Well, um, seems to me, I think when that discussion was going on, I was in a hotel room in Kansas City, and <laughs> so things are a little fuzzy. Um, about that meeting for me, but what what it seemed I think we were trying to do, and we were um, charging whoever does the selection um, with really thinking about diversity and getting some diversity on this board. And so while that you know is not maybe uh, part of the composition of the interviewing group that I think was very strongly um, a feeling of, of the board that they should take that into consideration when they're making their selection. Okay, thank you. And then there's Scott and uh, before we go to Scott, any, anybody else from the board who wanted to weigh in on the current discussion? Okay. I just, I, all I want to say is that Deborah's correct and that's what's in the language. That there's some certain um, there's some certain aspects, whether it's um, a person of color or low income or underserved areas. There's certain criteria that gives them more points, if you will, mm -hmm. and to, to give them the edge up in being selected or appointed. Okay. Okay. And then I see Scott. 
That's um, a perfect segue, what uh, Commissioner Savas just said, because I was just going to tag on to Grover and Deborah's comments. Grover was, uh, according to my notes, um, our official, you know, the red line, uh, we could also just say the marked up version or something to that effect. Um, what Grover said about the, the recommendation on this, this nomination committee is correct, according to my notes as well. But then to Deborah's point and to Commissioner Savas's point, it also says in this is the language that you drafted previously when we stopped meeting in February. It says the nomination subcommittee will work with with staff to evaluate and nominate residents with an intent for membership to reflect the diversity of residents of the district, including but not limited to geography, age, dis uh, disabled, low income immigrant, refugees, um, BIPOC, and LGBTQ+. So what I would suggest is you've developed the, the composition of the board um, and that the subcommittee would be charged with trying to best meet those intents of when we do uh, the evaluation and interview process, that that is one of, one of the, the components of or criteria of evaluation. So that that was captured uh, by the by the group previously in the in the draft um, update. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to do a few go rounds to check out where levels of consensus on various items. We're going to be around uh, six thirty, at which time I'd like to make uh, some time for the public comments and questions, and then we'll get, go back to starting to close the meeting and talking about next steps and process. Um, okay, so starting with Scott's. Uh, what he just proposed now on diversity. So um, level of support for um, referring back to this draft language and um, making efforts as he proposed. Can you just do a show of hands if you're in favor of that? Okay, I'm seeing everyone is in, in support of that. Okay, um, and now I'm gonna go back to the beginning um, and I'm gonna try to capture what I heard were just items of proposals. Um, one was that uh, Wilda and Kelly Brooks um, seek, uh, seek approval from Milwaukee for the IGA and that that happened, I think you said by mid-October. Is that right, Wilda? It could possibly happen by mid-October. Okay. I think that what we probably would do, and I've been communicating a little bit with Kelly, is, um, is a, an amendment to the current IGA um, with, um, and then send it in as a letter from the city to the county. Okay. I mean, you know, process still has to be worked through, but yeah. you know, I think that that's what would happen. Okay, so that's, it's a goal, it's an aspiration. Okay. All right, so let Chandra, me- may I, on just on that point, may I yeah, comment sure. real quick? It's just to help help move the process along. I was going to suggest the same thing, that we could accomplish what we've just discussed by if the city's in agreement and if our board is in agreement, a simple amendment to the IGA would, to me, would be the best path forward. So I was going to recommend the same thing, and I just wanted to support that idea okay. that I think that would help. Okay, so level of support for Wilda's proposal about the IGA. I'm seeing, yes, you all are, there's consensus about that. Okay. Um, and next is, uh, I'm gonna go to Commissioner Savas, your multi-part proposal, but it starts with um, uh, going to the board, I think on Tuesday, um, the, count, the commissioners, and updating them that there are 11 members that you've chosen option two, that you have an appointment process that um, you, you came up with prior to your September meeting. Um, and, and with the IGA issue is also being addressed that you get the process started for recruitment. So that was you know, what you had proposed. I would like you to clarify what you mean by getting the process started. If you could speak to a couple of specifics on that and then we'll vote on that. 
Oh yeah, and and it, it may not really be necessary to for the city of Milwaukee to send or make an amendment. Um, frankly, if we don't do anything official other than start the process, so I, I think um, okay, yeah, I don't think there'd be any harm done because we wouldn't be really taking an action until the board actually did the approval. But okay, so my clar the clarification on what point again, Chandra? Just on you said I would like to get the process started, so not fully populate the board. But what what did you mean by get the process started? Well, yeah, just the appointments and, you know, uh, if we if we wait for, um, if we wait until after October 31st, we finished our work and then we, then we, then we wait for the city of Milwaukee and Clackamas County to approve the draft language and go through all the processes. Now we're seven, eight yeah. weeks in, we have a holiday, um, you know, and then, and then we got to notify the CPOs and all the different parties that would be on this interview panel and get them all coordinated together. Um, that we're just losing time. Yes, understood. And, and, and all I'm trying to do is really kind of expedite, ex, ex, excuse me, expedite the process in a way that doesn't require just yet um, any official action. It just gets the process underway so that by the time we actually take the actions, uh -huh. that we've got we've got that underway. So it's just okay. And the actions. Time. So is it is it fair to say the actions would be uh, process, but a short of a vote on approving the members. Is that what you're getting at? Okay. All right. Um, and yeah, go ahead, Wilda. I just want to ask a clarifying question. Yeah. Because I heard about appointments. So does that mean actually doing the interviews before we have before we have the agreement? Doing the interviews, but not actually appointing anybody I'm still a little confused on that well yeah I, I guess we just want to do that I mean I, I think the intent is that uh, we do the interviews and maybe there's a recommendation for the folks and then so that again when it's all official then it goes before the board you know, we approve it and we're we're on our way okay so interviews recommendations but the vote happens after the October 31st approval. The approval of the of the new members won't happen until the, the agreements are signed. Okay, does that answer your question, Wilda? Yes, it does. But what I what I want to be sure we're clear on too, and maybe it's a separate point. Mm -hmm. So help me out here. I'm because I'm not sure is who comprises the interview committee. Uh, the what the, the draft language that we have in the bylaws that Scott just read to us and and if Milwaukee's oh I'm assuming Milwaukee's okay with that because we just kind of had a hand raise I think we did uh, maybe we didn't Chandra's in control of that but um, uh, basically on, on those three on those three things the the 11 members the map option two map and the interview panel as as we crafted is that does help does that help Wilda yeah um the uh, again the only people that wouldn't be in the ham ha hopper i guess for consideration for reappointment would be myself and joel so i mean i just want to make sure that's a that's all right i guess yeah i never you know, up until tonight, I never thought about, you know, it, it seems to me that because the appointment process, because yourself and Joel are appointed differently, that the, the people on the interview panel would be the people other than yourselves, I guess, because it would be members that are guided by or selected from the CPO in the sub areas. So it would seem appropriate that they would, that the members, it would seem appropriate that the members being selecting would be from the unincorporated area. I, I don't understand why. I mean, okay. I mean, does it matter? I mean, if we're all here and we all represent the district, but if we don't represent the district, then everything we've been doing is for naught. Okay, I see Deborah. Yeah, I, I don't see why uh, Wilda and Joel couldn't take part in the recruiting process. Um, there are 22 people who've applied there are going to be a lot of interviews. Um, certainly, Joel and Wilda don't want to be on all of them. <laughs> um, 
devote their lives to this. Um, no, no, nobody else does either. So, um, you know, other than, you know, we can't, we wouldn't certainly um, be on any interview that involved ourselves, but there's a lot of others. And it's just going to be a question of, I mean, I'm sure you're going to do it as a Zoom. And um, who's available? Who's available at, at different times so we can spread the joy around to um, everybody on the board? Okay, so let's cir let's circle back to Commissioner Savas's proposal and go to Deborah's, which is what's the level of support for Joel and Wilda to be on the uh, interview panel? If I've got that correct. Is that the right question? So level of support for that, any objections? Is, is that on the presumption that there's only two people from the DAB that do that? No, no I'm, I'm trying to just capture the-, no, the no, I think, I think it's some, you know, for varying uh, interviews, probably all of us would take part on some interview. Um, as I said, spread the joy around and um, is there 22 people being interviewed? That's a lot. That's a lot of time and, and effort. And uh, I, I just don't see any reason why Joel and Wilda couldn't, couldn't be on there. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, um, and we know that they're going to be on the board. And I felt that um, in past boards that I've been on, that it's, it's really nice to have people who have been on the board or on the board um, part of the interviewing process because they, they have an insight into what's, what the requirements really are for uh, being on the board. And in this case, I think we know uh, the requirements have been a lot of time and effort. So anyway, that's it. Okay. I uh, ask so, a quick yeah, question. Go ahead, Amy. So uh, I think Deborah, you're assuming that every every applicant will be interviewed, and I'm wondering. You know, I've been through uh, processes in the past where uh, boards and committees are appointed, and I think PGA has a process that was is probably somewhat of a template that that the departments follow. I'm not sure, but my experience with that was that the departments would be involved in uh, helping with that with that process. It sounds like you have, you can reference the bylaws for what the selection committee has looked like in the past. But I'm, I'm just wondering about that. Are you going to um, interview all 22 or would you go through a screening process and then determine which people you were actually gonna talk to? Okay. Why Thank would you, you do that? that? Um. I do want to pause right there and I am tracking where the conversation is ending, but I want to switch now to allow for the public comment and questions. Um, and I think that we've got a call on Dylan for that and then we'll circle back because I do see Paul and Grover as well. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can proceed with that. Is it? Okay, great. Okay, thank you very much. I am Dylan Blaylock with Clackamas County Public and Government Affairs, and I will be coordinating tonight's public comment. If any attendees would like to provide a comment related to district business, you can do so now by utilizing the raise hand feature on Zoom. That's at the top or bottom, depending on your device. If you're on the phone, but I don't see anyone on the phone. Uh, great, we are asking comments to be kept to three minutes or less. Once a commenter reaches three minutes, you will hear this sound, and that means it's time to start wrapping up. So uh, anyone who would like to give public comment, please go ahead and raise your hand now. I see none, Chair Parks. Oh, you're muted, Chair Parks. Chair Parks, you're muted. Sorry about that. <laughs> Dylan, have we received any email correspondence or correspondence in any other way? Um, I don't believe we did that for uh, this meeting. No, I know of no 
I know of no okay. emails that we received. Right. Okay. All right. Then we'll close the public meeting part of it, and I'll turn it back over to Chandra. Thank you, Wilda. Okay. So we were back with, um, and I, I think I, I think I'd like God, to pause the discussion about. Um, uh, I, I, I'd like to check for consensus first because it, it may be that we can move from this. But uh, I think Deborah is proposing that all of the board members be um, have the option of um, participating on the interview panels. And is there any objection to that? What's the level of support? Are you in favor of everyone being permitted to do that? I have a qualifying question first. Okay. An important question. And I, because the presumption was that we would follow the draft language that we came up with for the selection process. So my question to Scott is, Scott, was the DAB membership involved in the interview panel limited in any way to two people or five people or whatever? Yeah, thank, thank you, Commissioner. I actually wanted to, I was hoping to make that point before you got too far along in this. So um, what your your draft language says from your previous discussions, and again, this goes back several months, so um, to refresh you, the, the recommendation was that, well, first of all, let me say this. And of course, of course, my dog barks when I'm trying to talk. She's been quiet the entire meeting. Um, the, I wanna just make a clarification. The current bylaws do not, um, they're silent on the, on, the, on the appointment process, which means we just follow the typical county process where staff interviews and makes recommendations to the board. You recommended back in February, January, February, that you form a nomination subcommittee for any appointments. And that subcommittee includes um, two members of the DAB. So you would have to select two members. I think that's your question, Commissioner. And that goes along with two staff, and two representatives from CPOs in the district. So six people total are on the um, nomination subcommittee, and um, that includes two members from the DAB. So I did wanna kind of get that clarification in because the conversation about having multiple or everybody from the, the current makeup of this committee goes against what you've previously recommended. Yeah, and, and that's, and like I said, I, I, didn't, I did not think about how or the comp how the DAB or who DAB members would be or not be part of that until we talked about it here tonight. So to, to Deborah's earlier point, it's not that I necessarily disagree with Deborah's point that everyone should be involved, but the the presumption was as whereas the draft language that prescribes only two people. And it seems that that was my memory. So therefore it seems more appropriate that that um, maybe the unincorporated have more say in who they're placing in the unincorporated than having people from Milwaukee that have automatic seats um, play a role in that. So I don't necessarily disagree, um, but if it's going to be structured that way, but if it's alternating, that's different. So that, that, that's why I'm a little bit hesitant um, to knowing that it's limited to two. Um, not include some unincorporated representation, make sure that they're seating people that they think will represent them the best. Um, no, I wasn't uh, apparently very clear. Um, I'm, I'm not uh, disagreeing with the two uh, DAB members. I'm just thinking that if we have a lot of people to interview, um, it's not going to be the same two. And it's going to be um, whoever can, can do it at that particular time. And staff can make sure that um, there, nobody is disproportionately interviewing um, everybody. I mean, they can just see that. But it's it probably will be a question of who's available. And I think we all should have the opportunity to be available, but certainly not everybody, you know, the whole bar board be on a, on a interview. I don't think that would work at all. You couldn't all find the time. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And then to Grover, and then okay. I saw Wilda. Thank you. Um, so I, 
to, to be clear, I'm agreeing with what Deborah just said, not all of the board would ever be in all of the interviews, but no more than two was the point that Deborah made and Paul made, and I agree with that. But I also very much agree with Paul's first point. Part of the reason that we are going through this whole process is to make sure that the unincorporated 80% of the population has representation that represents them. And there have been a bunch of us. I have, I have 200 signatures on a petition that I have yet to find an opportunity to turn in where, where their desire to have no electeds be on this board because it believes that electeds interfere with the unincorporated who have no electeds being able to get the same input. So I, I really do want to make sure that we have, a, and that's why it said two CPO members. It is people from the community, not the city of Milwaukee. And before that, not the city of Happy Valley. It is people from the 80% of the population need to be involved in the process of selecting the members who will represent them. That's the only part I want to get to. And I'm glad Deborah clarified and Paul clarified that. They're not all going to show up at one time, but two at a time and two at a time and two at a time sounds great. Okay, thank you. We're going to go to Wilda, then Ben, and then we're going to shift to closing the meeting. Yeah, I just um, am confused again because I keep hearing about this singular um, thought of only apparently, you know, only unincorporated could reasonably nominate or, not, or select in unincorporated people that represent them. And I was thinking that we, no matter where we're from, we represent the entire North Clackamas Special District of Parks and Recreation. And I, you know, I've often been called not a citizen because I currently happen to be an elected official, but I'm as much a citizen and pay taxes and pay into the district as anybody else does. And it's not that I want to sit on all the interview panels, I guarantee you that. But I, I'm getting very confused once again between the mindset of who and what we're supposed to be doing on this district board. I know why I'm there and it's not just to represent the city of Milwaukee. I've worked with North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District for 21 years. So most of that time I was not an elected official. You know, so I, I just wanna be sure that we're all thinking about this in the global mindset that we have continued to discuss. Okay, okay. and Ben will be the last comment. Sure, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think just because the, the majority of us are being turned out and probably have submitted applications, I don't believe if you've submitted an application, you should be sitting in an interview. And I think, I don't think any of us should sit in an interview at this point. It's just too muddy, too political. I feel like we should get people appointed with the, by the district the way they had done in the past. I have faith that, that they could put and assemble a body together really well. And once the body is staggered, then we could start implementing the way the interview process goes with DAB members. And it could be that in a sub area, like sub area one, we make sure that those two people are staggered, right? The two people in Milwaukee are staggered. The two people in each one are staggered. And therefore maybe that one person in that sub area, if, if the position's open, there's always a, a person who's not positions open that could sit on the interview for that other position. But this time around, I don't think we should be getting, we should not be in the interview process. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, we're at about 6.45 and, um, uh, and so we're going to shift to to closing the meeting, even though we're in the you are you know in process, um, because I do want to go back to um, the points you were talking about at the beginning that we said we'd circle back to. Um, let's see. So, and we may not resolve all of them, but let's let's. I'm just going to run through what I what I remember. Um, so, the question of drafting. 
does anyone have a proposal? And I don't know, Scott, you sort of, um, I think we're the last one to speak on this, but for draft, a drafting process, is there any, um, any proposal you want to make now that um, will lead you to, it's, I guess there are a couple questions. One is, how many more meetings are you willing to meet weekly um, from this point forward until the end of October? So let's, let's maybe start with that one. Is there a willingness to meet weekly? I see a lot of nodding. Yeah, and I wasn't sure what you meant by drafting, drafting. Oh, the bylaws. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I think if, okay. if we meet as a group, we have a better opportunity to. Okay, yeah, that does make it easier. Okay, so, so let's, let's try it that way. So at this point, you're all willing to meet weekly from now until the end of October. And, um, and so then there's a question of how you do the drafting process. I think I heard a proposal of um, work, circulating a draft ahead of time, and there is an existing draft. Am I correct about that, Scott? Oh, you're on mute. Sorry, sometimes it's hard to get to that mute button as fast oh, as no. you want to. Yeah. Yes, and that, I, is, and I, that okay. is correct, Chandra. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so, so I think um, with the time we have remaining, just spend a few minutes on what needs to happen, what, any requests you have of staff um, information that you'd like to have so that the next meeting is successful. Any prep? Is it a draft of the bylaws? Go ahead, what Wilda. Well, there have been suggestions on what some of the changes of the bylaws have been, but a mm -hmm. lot of them we hadn't even gotten to yet. Mm -hmm. I think there were maybe two or three different people who had sent in suggestions on various parts of the bylaws. So I don't know if that's incorporated into Scott's notes and how he differentiates between what the group has already voted on or more or less took a straw vote or whatever, how we got mm -hmm. you know, to consensus on some of the things or, well, these were suggested, but there hasn't been any discussion about it yet, you know, so on and so forth type of thing. Cause I think it, it could get a little muddy, you know because of because of that because there were a lot of good suggestions and there were some suggestions that some people might think are great and other people might disagree with and some people think are you know the best thing and yeah and and i really hear that the the competing you know uh interests of trying to have a good process and um take into account the work that's already been done with meeting your directive of the board which is to amend the bylaws on competition on composition so um, what, what information do you need for the next meeting? What, what, what do you want to request of the staff with regard to bylaws? Oh, I see commissioner and then Grover. Yeah, I just want to just clarify that <clears throat> there's two draft bylaws out there. I want to make mm -hmm. sure that the draft bylaws that we're asking to come back, Scott, are the ones that we presented to the DAB um, that were in red ink that were marked up, the marked up draft, and not the, not the draft bylaws that were in at the last NCPRB Board of Directors meeting, uh, August 17th. Okay, I wanna make that, make that clarification, is that correct? Yeah, that's understood. We, um, I, we do have what I think is the last, and again, we'll call it the marked up version. It's, it's got the strike throughs and the con it actually shows all the comments in the columns. I think that's what Grover was just holding up. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be my understanding is we would send that to you in advance of meeting next Wednesday. And that would be the basis for your discussion to continue to work on that. And then to Wilda's point, you, you do bring up a good point, Wilda, about we made a lot of edits on this on the fly but I don't know that there was necessarily consensus to all the points that are marked up. So we'll just have to have that understanding going in and you'll have to kind of re, um, re examine some of those, but we'll, we'll do our best to find where you did make, um, had, had consensus on points of, of those to the best that we can. Um, we'll have to go back to the, to the audio tapes, I think, to get most of that. Okay. Right, and, and if I can, Sean, sure, just yeah. one thing before now and the end of the meeting, I want to make sure is that if, if I, whether or not I got direction to go before my colleagues on Tuesday and start expediting the recruitment process, um, just to get it started, I want to make sure we, because I'm not sure I got that direction from the DAB yet. I did not hear that, that there was consensus on that because there was still clarification. Um, so, 
uh, let's see if you're correct correct on that. Is just by a show of hands, um, does Commissioner Savas have uh, a green light to talk to the board as he proposed on Tuesday? If it, raise your hand if it's a yes. As he proposed. As he proposed. Yeah. But what does that can can that be clarified? Well, I still am not sure. Yeah. That yeah I, I mean. I think what was I think what was clear was that you have consensus that he will report an update that there's 11 members that you've chosen option two, I think, and that there's an appointment process in the works. Um, I don't I think what's not clear and you may be able to get clarity on this on uh, Wednesday is what process can happen before October 31st so so maybe that's where you are Commissioner is a report, but a lim more limited than what you had suggested. Yeah, and, and I'm hoping that 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 parallel to that, that um, um, Councillor Parks goes to the City Council and somehow at least says, we agree on these particular things. You know, she's giving her report back and there's some kind of agreement, so there's no disagreement, um, that we're just going to start, initiate the process. Yes. as we do at the fine. So I, I, I want to make sure that we're doing that hand in hand with this cooperation of Milwaukee. Okay, and you did have consensus on, on that work for the IGA. Um, okay, and so so uh, Grover, and then I'm gonna, uh, yes. Okay, good. So uh, we keep talking about these meetings, but are, so are we meeting on the 7th, the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th? And if so, I want to clarify that everybody's got that on their calendars because we keep talking about our next meetings and we haven't talked about when they are. Go ahead, Ben. Uh, there is a Milwaukee Park Board meeting on the 28th that I am a part of, and Wilda is a liaison. That's the only conflict I have. Hopefully, we'd be done by then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, whatever. Yeah, if we've met those first three Wednesdays. Okay. All right. So we'll shoot for that and clarify maybe subsequent to this meeting that that's something you know, what the calendar is. Okay. Um, so the next three Wednesdays, Commissioner, um, your, so I think you're clear that I, uh, so let's just check that out. Consensus that the commissioner has um, your support to go this Tuesday and report on 11 members option two and an appointment process, um, but then to come back on Wednesday to get clarification on what process will happen before, before October 31st. Is that correct? Well, so yeah. Yeah, what I'm what I'm thinking, I'm, I now that I better understand what Deborah is saying, um, mm -hmm. as far as rotating, so everyone has a role in that. That I mean, mm -hmm. that'll that'll that's fine. Um, I don't have any quarrel with that. Um, so, but 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 basically, that that third piece, that last piece, is that mm -hmm. the draft process outlined in the draft bylaws, the marked up bylaws, is the process we would be using to um, for the interviewing of the candidates. I think you're in discussion about that. Yeah, but so so a pr so consensus on the first two parts of commissioner's proposal, just show of hands if you're supp in support of that Tuesday. Okay, I think I see everyone on I'm that. Sorry, I, have okay. a, I have a question. I'm, I'm yes, sorry, Joel. this is getting really muddy, but okay. I, a consensus on uh, the, uh, we're gonna have it, it, some involvement with current DAB members on interviewing? Is that what we're agreeing to? No, I think it's just on what commissioner is going to report on. I, I apologize. Um, that's, uh, no, it's okay. Um, yeah, and then you'll, you'll clarify the process, hopefully next Wednesday meeting. Um, okay, and so at this point, I think I wanna turn it over to um, Chair Wilda, Cha Chair Parks, to um, close the meeting. I do see Grover's hand up. So do you want to make one last comment before we close? No, I'm good. Okay. All right. And, and Scott but, has a comment. Right. I see that Scott does. And I <clears throat> just to Joel's point, though, I did want to say I, I hope that that selection is something that we are discussing next week, because I agree with Ben, and I'm not sure why we can't just do the selection as it's been done in the past. So just keep that thought in mind, everybody. Yeah. And please do bring those proposals. A discussion about it next yeah. week when we okay. meet. Okay. Know. Scott. Yeah, I just wanted to confirm with everybody that, you know, from what you've just discussed and what we've heard, 
So we will, we will plan to meet for the next three Wednesdays, October 7, 14, and 20, 21. Um, if we don't need all those, great, um, but we'll plan for those. We'll, um, we'll send out a calendar update for all of you. Just make sure you've got that pinned down. Um, and then um, for next week, we will, so we'll just do a simple agenda that is probably going to be um, identical to tonight's agenda, but we will also send uh, to the DAB members the um, the marked up version of the of the bylaws that you can then, you know, get into next week. So if you have any different direction for me, that's what we are planning to do. Thank you. I do have one thing I want to add to that, Scott, and that is between now and next uh, uh, Wednesday, can staff look at the 22 applicants and find out how well they fit into the criteria because one of the things we left undiscussed is if there's an area that has no applicants how do we deal with that and we haven't crossed that bridge we haven't resolved that so can staff actually look at the 22 applicants and find out do they fit this criteria of option two or are there holes we need to know that yes Thank now you. that we so we were waiting to do that until we had agreement around the map and we've got that, so yes, we can. Great. Okay, okay. And, and Scott, what do you? Th how soon do you think you can get the draft circulated? Is that quick? Uh, we can send that out by tomorrow. Okay, great, okay. All right, thank you and, for and that. We'll, we'll, we probably will post an agenda tomorrow by end of business for next week's meeting, and then we'll send that draft of the, um, the bylaws. For as, when I say draft bylaws, I'm talking about where we left off before as, as has yeah. been. They're not necessarily draft, they're working copy of ideas and suggestions and what we actually did. Because some of those ideas and suggestions, I know we never got to as a group, you know, okay. down, down, down the road. And meanwhile, well, we, we haven't discussed this recently, but I do want to reiterate that um, the Kelly Brooks has been listening in tonight, so she knows that we want to go to city council as quickly as we can, but I don't believe that we'll be able to do that Tuesday night. So it'll probably be the third Tuesday in October. And I think that she and I can, um, you know, just solicit a, a quick letter from the city council or something that, yeah, the 11 members works. And because that's a major thing that's in the bylaws that I think they'd want to, you know, it, it says in there that that's one thing they need to weigh in on. So. Anyhow, I just want you to know that we will do that. So, thank you. Um, okay, so that concludes this portion of the meeting. And do we have anything under director reports that isn't about bylaws? <laughs> Nothing else to report. That's it. Okay, and we know what our future min meetings are going to be about bylaws. So, <laughs> we seem stuck in the middle here. All right, you guys. Okay, with that, um, I would ask for an adjournment to the meeting. Somebody want to move to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Okay, any second to that? Second. All right, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand or saying aye or whatever you turn you on. Okay, <laughs> all right, thank you guys. And Chandra, thank you for facilitating. We appreciate it. The staff, thank you for all the good work you've done on this. It's just pretty awesome. Thank you. And thank you board members that you keep coming back. <laughs>